can't count the Mongols out. Yeah. They're always charging. Yeah. They're always galloping across the, the plateau. So these guys know we're coming. They can hear us coming. They can hear the hooves. That is different. I don't think you could hear the Mongols coming. Well, with the horses. Yeah, that's good. Right? I guess you're right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of NLU's Film Room, presented by our friends at Titleist and FootJoy. My name is DJ, joined by my homies and associates, Solly and Neil. Greetings. Hello, fellas. How we doing? Doing well. Excited to relive some of this. Not excited to relive some of it. Uh, I have a feeling I'm, I'm, I'm prepared to take some 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 more needling, I believe. But uh, one of the most fun days and rewarding days I think I've had uh, since we started this thing. And we got a lot of lot of stuff to talk about as it as it relates to it. Neil, how has your life changed since the the dramatically successful release of this video? People stopping you in the streets. The Icarito, Icarito, you'll get them next time. Probably more for my puppy than because of the video, but. Uh, being stopped on the street at all hours, unbelievable. Um, I would call this maybe not director's cut, director's vignettes. Yeah, uh, right. Maybe just little, kind of a director's just, commentary. Yeah, it's DVD bonus commentary. To go through what we are going to do today, it's something we've never really done before. We're excited for it. Uh, we're going to be kind of breaking apart our video that we did with Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth at the plantation course at Kapalua a couple weeks ago. We had to spin that edit up very, very, very quickly uh, to try to get it out before the tournament started. We didn't want to really like sit on this, sit on this all this great content and then roll it out a week after the tournament or something like that because we, we thought it'd be a lot more fun for people to watch it before the tournament. However, that meant we ended up having to leave a lot on the cutting room floor. So we tried to go through, comb through all of that stuff. Uh, and find a lot of interesting little nuggets. It's always something we've wanted to do. We've talked about it pretty much every year, Sam. Like, we, we got to go out to Kapalua. There's guys that go out before the new year. They go out before tournament week. They play the course. It's very chill. We got to go out there and do some podcasts with them and film. Maybe get, if you know, if you're lucky, maybe catch them. You can film on the plantation course. But you also got to go run these through agents. You got to run these through teams. You got to, it, it's a lot, right? And so, like trying to coordinate one guy's schedule is enough. So I was just like, hey, let's narrow it down. It was their idea of basically like, hey, like we're kind of traveling with Jordan. Like I'm sure he'd love to come play too as well. I was like, yeah, that'd be fine. Like that'd be okay. Like Neil, I know you were kind of supposed to film, but like, do you want to pair up with Jordan Spieth and play a match all shot? Like, it's like that'd be kind of fun, right? And here we are. And then uh, you're like, oh, you, got, you mind if Bones comes out? I was like, no, I don't mind. Like I don't, mind at all. I think that might actually be a good thing. So we're off and running with incredible amount of autonomy and ability to to make it what it is. And it's a thing that Titleist kind of gives us access to their, their tour staff in a way we couldn't have really imagined happening. And it was just a lot easier of an ask to say, hey, we'd love to kick off the Titleist partnership with a video with you guys. Do you guys want to help support it? And those guys were all in. So we are forever indebted to them for that. Uh, Neil, talk to me about you know, receiving, I have probably a Slack, maybe it was a text, I don't know. Uh, hey, we need you to partner up with Jordan Spieth uh, and try to take down the Twirly Boys. What, what was your uh, reaction to that? Yeah, Solly hit me with, hey, you got a minute? I said, yeah, <laughs> I got a minute. What's what's happening? And uh, he asked, you know, he asked me to hop out of the crowd, and play the drums with Pearl Jam or <laughs> would be the kind of equivalent. It's like, you know, I know the song. I just, uh, I mean, there was no way I wasn't going to play. So I was thrilled to get, to get the call up. It was great. So we got the content in the barn, the hay in the barn, I believe on a Saturday it was New Year's Eve. Uh, and we knew that the video had to come out on Wednesday. We knew that we had another couple shoots scheduled for the week. So it basically gave us about 36 hours to flip the edit. So let me just say for all the Tracer fans out there, I, I'm a massive Pro Tracer fan myself. I get it. Didn't have time to do it. We, we will have more Tracers in the future. I hear you. You didn't come up with that idea. We've thought about that as well. I'm, I'm well aware. Uh, we're fucking working on it. Okay, so God. just just she relax. Was on the other foot, man. Do you know what a hard camera is? Do you, guys, <laughs> well, do you commenters know what a hard camera is? Okay, if I because broadcast that's the issue. If I broadcast 45 tournaments a year, I think it might be a different conversation. This was a bit of a one-off. We don't have to get into it. Uh, so, like I said, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna kind of just go through some of our favorite moments. Some of it's going to be a little janky. Some of it has audio without video. Some of it has video that doesn't match the audio. So just stick with us and uh, more important to to listen than it is probably to watch. But uh, let's just dive into it, guys. I, I think the first thing that, that really stuck with me was Jordan's uh, rehearsal 
thoughts. I know this was one thing, Neil, we were definitely talking about just like, man, if we get a chance, we got to ask him what's up with this rehearsal. It's been it's been very weird to watch the last eight, 12 months or so. And uh, so we kind of just point blank right on the range. I think it was the first question I asked him all day. Like, hey, man, you just, just tell me what's going on here. Can you talk to me about the rehearsal feel. What are, what are we trying to feel? Like? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, pretty exaggerated, but I'm trying to collapse it. Shorten my arm swing, collapse it going back a little bit better. I've been carrying on a little with the arm swing. Swinging longer is not a good good thing for us. So I just kind of have to do it right now. Get my right elbow lower like it used to be. There are a couple things there. I hate, hate, hate him using the word collapsing because that's a bad <laughs> word when it comes to speed. And so he's trying to collapse it. And my initial reaction in the moment was like, no, nah, we don't like collapsing, bud. We don't like that word. We need to sh strike that from the record. Uh, but having the context of Spieth explaining what he's trying to do was two things was, well, it makes sense. He's trying to keep his elbow in. He's getting his hands are getting weird at the top. Like uh, it all makes a ton of sense. And it shows how, um, I, I mean, self-confident might be the word. He's like, yeah, I know it looks awful. I don't care. Like, I don't care what you say about me. I, it just was like the first sign and or like the first showing of many of him just being so comfortable in his own skin and you know the more you, he kind of explains why he's doing what he's doing you're like yeah man let's just let's keep doing it if, it, if it's working i don't care what it looks like either you know he's trying to get the job done so it was uh very endearing for me all right getting into kind of handicapping the match the reason i want to play this is because it was a little bit of kismet as the you know the competitors were making their way over to maui uh, Sally, of course, I don't want to make this an, an American Airlines thing. Sally, of course, got upgraded probably because there were four people on his flight. Uh, and, you know, of course, who does he sit next to? You know, I think we probably got a photo we could post of this. The, the two boys are just yucking it up in first class. And, and Jordan, I believe, was worried about his partner. Sally, is that right? He was, yeah. Jordan didn't really know what he signed up for with this day at all. He's like, oh, I thought Justin and I were teammates. I was like, no, 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 you're going to play with Neil. I know you haven't met him yet, but I, he'll, you'll be fine. He'll be totally fine. He was, you know, he was like a 10 handicap a few years ago, but he's way better now. Like, you, you'll be totally fine. We wanted to go opposite, right? So we got to let them choose odd holes. So Which may or may not be an advantage. May not, may the, not the, not kids, the kids don't want strokes. Drastic. We don't need them. When was the last time you got strokes? <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. He was begging for I'll him in text. You were begging whenever. for him. I mean, now Bones coming out as a, I mean, that's a, that's a one, yeah. one stroke advantage, he you was know? Asking, he was asking what class Neil was flying in on the way out here because he was- My brother upgraded me. Carson and I got first class. We had the well, lay flat situation. I just situation. saw a picture of these two back-to-back -back seats, him and Justin. <laughs> that's right. And I'm, I'm like- No, well, TC you know, wouldn't let Neil, that happen. Is Neil going to have a back problem from like no. up and you two just- <laughs> I think the biggest disadvantage was not having the alpha Mr. Greller out there. Mm -hmm. uh, Michigan was playing. It was college foot, big college football day. So, you know, you had Bones out there, which I think automatically snaps JT into, like, shot-making mode. And we just didn't have our a third member of the band. I, I love that guy. Yeah. Gives me calm seeing him out there. It's like, yeah. oh, God. You don't want to – he played yesterday, and we're playing yeah. – me, me and Michael are playing Bones and Justin tomorrow. Uh, yeah. And we played yesterday, and, uh, boy, is he the opposite when he plays golf. It's unbelievable. The what he beat, beats himself up. Oh, he's just the most mental midget ever. Yeah, I love source it. Source loser, source winner, and but it's the opposite. That's really really good stuff and very endearing. I'm a big big fan of the uh, do as I say, not as I do lifestyle and mentality. I subscribe to that myself. Uh, so it just just very happy to hear that about Greller. Yeah, it sounds like he's might be a member of Opus Day. Uh, <laughs> Can, can beat himself up a little bit, which, uh, listen, that would have been, he would have been right at home uh, with us out there. Uh, TC also, I also back channel a little with TC to ask Greller, what can I do to put Jordan in his comf you know, comfort zone? He's like, Jordan puts everybody else in, in a comfort zone. Like if Neil doesn't have the round of his life, then, then it's his fault because everybody plays better with Jordan. So that didn't make <laughs> me feel great. Uh, I mean, overall, I was happy with my performance, but I, I wouldn't say I had the round of my life. Um, so I feel like I let, uh, you know, I let Jordan down and I let Greller down. So, you know, apologies to both of them. Neil, you said something very interesting about Spieth making everybody else comfortable and putting kind of everybody else ahead of them. I think that leads us right into my next clip. One of my favorites. Uh, you have played exactly zero rounds of golf with the Pro V1. 
uh, I believe, at this point. And Jordan uh, is a Pro V1X guy, much like myself. And uh, he he was adamant that like, no, 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 we got to play your golf ball. What ball uh, What ball you got for me? Oh, wait, am I well, play your ball. No, I'm a blank slate, so I can play the X. I don't I, care. I play the X, but I don't. It's not one ball rolling effect or no? Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I think no, you drive. I think you. No, I'll play the X. Teeing off, play you, when you're yeah, teeing yeah, off, yeah. you hit your ball. Okay. And then I'll Which hit mine with the par threes that I have. What is it, number two oh. and number eight? I'll hit mine. Okay. As we got in the round, it just was like, you know, thing, it was kind of a clusterfuck. <laughs> Early in the round was noticeable, even with that conversation. I think he asks, like, are, are we doing, can we change balls? Like, he's trying to play by the rules. And it's like, <laughs> later on in the match, too, it's like, yeah, dude, we're just making it up. Like, it's not, you know, he's like, oh, okay, all right, cool. So, like, he's always like, he's so sincere. He's always just like checking in on like, no, no, are we playing for real or do you just want me to mess around? Because I can do either. And I just like, what an easy guy to be around. Neil, kind of a two-part question. <laughs> tell me, one, how you're feeling on the first tee, just in general. And then two, tell me how you're feeling as Justin Thomas just pulling down your pants, making fun of your sweater, making fun of your corduroy hat. Uh, I know I, I don't want to air you out, but leaving the hotel that morning, you're like, dude, my fit is so fucking good. I'm going to look so <laughs> crispy out there. This is going to be so good. And then JT is just, just flicking you in the nuts, right? right no, I had team. it. I was murdered out. I had the, the, the foot joy premieres on new shoes. I was murdered out black. I had the the party boy beer belt on and the new corduroy hat. Listen, we're trying to move some hats in the pro shop. So told Casey, I'd get some eyeballs on that. And also the black ward tie dye skeleton sweater. Listen, we don't have very good photography of it. So I was, I was a little bit, you know, trying to, to place a little product. It was a little chilly. Listen in the shade, it's chilly out there. Now, once I got to the first tee, when we rolled up, I was sweating. And so I was like, all right, cool. Once we break this shade it, about halfway down the first fairway, we're going to, we're going to doth the the sweater, but it's just, I was about 10 minutes too soon. And, and JT got his fangs into me. I don't know what I'm the more odds he's, the fact that he's wearing like a full blown cotton sweater <laughs> or, a, or a corduroy hat. <laughs> it's definitely the sweater. We're trying to move some I'll tell you right? what though. I mean, you drive in these troughs, hats. you need that sweater. He's, he might be, he might the be no on laying up turtleneck. Was also, yeah. Yeah, we're trying to move some in the shop. Yeah, it's tough in these streets, man. We're trying to move some product. He strikes me as a guy that spent a lot of time with Michael Jordan because he does know how to shit talk and he sticks to it like throughout the round. Like it's it's kind of uh, it's kind of never ending. You're on your back foot a lot. So if you notice in the clip, I I basically just acted like it wasn't happening. And I went straight to Jordan. I was like, Jordan, what what target you like here? Meanwhile, I'm dying inside a little bit. I'm just like, God, I'm getting fucking clowned out here. What target you like here? I like it. Uh, you see the group of pines at the bottom? Yeah. The furthest right one. Okay. Oh, that's going to be really nice. Wow. Wow. Hugging that left yeah. side, kick straight. Oh, yeah. Love that I mean, that is. Yeah. You got it. Dang. Well, the good news for you was he diverted his attention from you at that point only to making fun of me the entirety of the rest of the day. Like, I don't know if it's just a proximity thing of us riding the same cart, but he just roasted me the entire day. And he did text me afterwards. He's like, yeah, watch that back. Man, I'm sorry. I'm such a dick sometimes. I don't know where I get that. But the Michael Jordan thing is very, uh, that's, a, that's a great, great uh observation, if you will, because that has to be where some of that comes from. Uh, so we're not going to go through every shot today, but I do want to speak to one of my favorites of the day, which happens to be the next one, JT's tee shot on number one, which was immediately where you can start to see like, oh, this is not a normal golf course. These are not normal players. These guys have infinity shots. And uh, JT starts describing like, oh, maybe I'll just do something like really weird and avant-garde and cheeky off uh, the number one tee here. I'm thinking about almost hitting, trying to like like a float cut? Yeah. Yeah, let's see a shot. Hit a shot, Justin. Yeah, Just here? don't tow it. Okay. <laughs> need help line or you good? I, I'm good, solid. Thank are we you. supporting each other today or are we like, is this like, no. I okay. mean, I don't, it's gonna go. this it's is gonna like a weird. don't tow it. But yeah, I'm yeah. gonna talk trash to my own teammate. <laughs> Justin, only, uh, this is, we only needle each other. It's gonna be hard to be teammates. Uh -huh. Yeah. I wish Justin took out I can't like wait till I the driver off the deck. <laughs> are you gonna feather this one? Thank yeah, you, Tom. A... What are we rooting for with this ball? I don't spin. Think... You need it to spin and spin. sit. So it stays in the fairway, but nice drive. 
when you go into show off mode with these guys, I'm like, yeah, I'll do so. I mean, I can hit this a million yard wide fairway any which way you want. I'm all, why do I hit it like a fade, like spinner to hold the fairway? Like, I didn't even know that was a thing. Solly, I want to go to your first shot of the day. We talked about Niels. Uh, your partner has hit the said float cut right in the middle of the fairway. I think he was actually on the netting. You guys pulled it off the netting uh, to give yourself a good little lie there. Talk to me about what you had talk to me about what you remember what you had and then we're gonna we're gonna hear jordan break down the shot a little bit and then we're gonna we're gonna listen to what actually happened on the ground there so i had like 170 actual but playing 160 and off a down slope so i kind of thought off the down slope it's gonna de-loft a little bit it's probably gonna fly relatively far i've got the new clubs my second full round with the new irons i think uh I used to hit a, 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 a nine iron 160. That's that's pretty much it. And JT said it was a 155 shot. So I try to take a little off of it. But man, dude, like, I'm not gonna lie. That first shot, I was like, dude, a shank here would be like <laughs> devastating. Like it would, I was not in the right mindset for that shot. I was like, let me, let's get like solid contact on this golf ball. Uh, and it came out just like totally, I floated it. I don't even know how I hit it really. My Again, my feels aren't there. A little hung over a little bit. Uh, and just like not like the first shot you want to hit, and I just started taking started taking the barrel fire. Oh, go! Nope. A little worried about the the uh, the downhill lies and stuff today. That was not my best contact. Just don't know how far the just don't know how far the ball goes. <laughs> I needed to hit the full one. You were telling me to hit the 155 one. Well, I mean, you flew it 140. Yeah, I know. What's that? That was definitely not a miss hit. We just don't know how far our irons go yet. No, that, that was a miss hit. <laughs> uh, easily, I think one of my favorite comments of the day is you trying to push back on JT, saying, well, you told me to hit the 155, and he said, yeah, but you hit it 140. Is uh, like they, That's just a bullet through the through the eyeball there. That's tough to come back from. Couple comfy pars on a uh, on number one. I don't number two. I don't think we need to spend too much time on. Saul, you want to do another 30, 40 minutes on humidity? Or are you are you good? I don't. I don't get why we're still doing it. I don't get why like they're still fighting this. It's uh, it's not my thing. It's just like literal science. The ball goes farther. Hey, look, whales. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's my favorite moment. Is is Jordan really well, just trying one, to? One thing worth noting. That's topic. where I, I I actually tested the waters a little bit on on two of like, all right, let's see if these guys pick up on some like Jack Reacher deep cuts. Oh my oh, God, no Genghis boy. Khan. Good. Let's go. Genghis Khan. Reference on the second hole. Genghis Khan. Oh, Mongolian, Mongolian reversal Khan. potential right here. That's pretty good. I mean, we got- Nice putt. You're bringing out this? I executed the game Mid plan. You said anything back there, you're gonna make. Old history, I mean, we're getting- That's, that's my specialty. He picked up exactly what I was putting down, baby. So you know I'm going back to the well on that. And Bones loved it. So, you know, I was like, all right, cool. We got, we, you know, I gotta have something going that we're building towards kind of getting them in on the dumb bit. And that's when they started to loosen up a little bit. And I thought, uh, I thought that was where we started having a really good time. And especially on number three, which Deej, I think we're getting to. And I'll say shout out to these guys for just bringing the energy, like from, from the, from the jump. Right. And they get so much out of each other. Like they just genuinely enjoy each other's company enough to the point where, uh, you could even see them as you get to the 16th hole when they became teammates after the, the match was over, like they just, their, their energy went to an entirely different level of just feeding off each other. And it, it, it does speak to the team chemistry thing as to why certain pairings work in team events and why certain ones don't. Like these dudes just, I know a lot's been made of the best friends thing, but it is pretty darn real. Well, and it also speaks a little bit to, I think, our next clip, which, Neil, this was a question I think you asked about how often you guys actually go head to head. And, you know, there's plenty of uh, live and PGL and restructuring, and we can have that whole conversation again. But it's kind of a travesty that you don't see these guys go head to head more. So they, they talk a little bit about how rarely that happens. When was the last time you guys went like head to head? Like, a, or I guess, like, what was your best head to head matchup? Uh, probably Boston. Yeah. He, we, were, we were tied for the lead, and at some point in the early in the back nine in Boston in 2017. That was yeah, in the we playoffs. One, two, in any other event. The, the East Lake that year. We were yeah, going. I like the, the way that both of those turned yeah. out. To be perfectly honest. Yeah. <laughs> sure. What about? I mean, we can go all the way back to junior golf if you want. That, well, Jordan wow. got the best of me in a lot college, of junior golf. College, college too. See, that's my partner. Although he we won. Got, we got. We got we history. Won the Heisman in college, but when we played head to head. For sure.
Um, I kind of wanted them to dig up some dirt from junior golf, but I mean, JT was kind of like, yeah, Jordan kind of dominated. Uh, so, you know, we didn't get, we didn't, the, the journalist didn't, he was asking some leading questions, didn't get the answer he was looking for. So we moved on. I think we can pick the scab on NCAAs at some point a little bit. I think that's about as close as we're going to get probably. But, uh, Solly, talk to me about the, the whiff on number three. I hate to put it that bluntly. Uh, but you know, just, uh, actually let's, let's watch it first. Yeah, let's play then, the tape on that. And, sure. Play it as many times as you want. I'll take then, whatever you want on this one. There's a lot going on here. Is this a sandwich? I, I, what else you want me to do with this? No, I, I don't That's need to a, get so. You're fine. Just I'm trying to be there. smart. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Unfortunately, extremely smart. Right? I'm really upset that you're doing this. I wanted to see a five iron with an open face right now. I'm, I, I'm going to fall in I mean, longer. this is weak. Like, this is for content. You got a sand wedge out just to protect your shot. I, look how much I have to choke up on a sandwich. Unbelievable. We don't even have anything on this match yet. Don't worry about your cart, guys. It's totally fine. That's because I didn't think you were hitting a wedge. Fuck <laughs> Christ. Yes! <laughs> JT grabs a five iron. <laughs> I would like to see this. I, I should have checked if that was plugged. What's the number you guys have? I may have been talking a little soon there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't realize you were still going to hit it. Not, yeah, he's going to see what that's like over there. This is... Oh, JT, let me grab this cart for you. <laughs> yeah, I need yeah. a club that's like this long. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, um, the, the sand wedge was actually probably the worst choice there. Okay, should have gone with like a seven or eight iron. Well, gosh, if we were on the same team, maybe you could have helped club me. Good one-liner for me uh, there, I think. I want to say, I got to shout out my partner. I mean, this was a master class, masterful job from Spieth of just like flooding the zone with you of like in in a in a like roundabout way he was like no this is so sensible see i, I can't believe he's hitting wedge that's the right thing to do i thought you're gonna hit five wood like this sucks and just got you all, all he got your wheels spinning a bunch and then the cart was placed perfectly and it, it looked like you just panicked you're like thanks for moving the cart guys oh it's fine i'll just fucking hit it and then you just like <laughs> spin out of control and it was like oh cool now do want to give you credit, Sal. You hit a absolute laser into the green after JT punches you out. Like you almost alley ooped one from about 140. So you, you recovered really well. I was gonna say if we're if we're in the nest here, we have uh, Neil pipes one out of bounds on this hole. I got one of the best players in the world responsible for just putting me somewhere in play. Puts me on this bank, uh, and then I stuff one in there inside of five feet. Uh, for him to clean up the bogey and uh and my let's guy did not look, make the putt. yeah let's take a look at what happened after that uh kind of a mental miss from jt here as you'll hear in the audio as well there's a part of me that kind of hopes i miss this so he can hit this putt. <laughs> hey let's stay focused on just making it right on it's good sully you guys want to go good, good? No. No? No. Oh, look at him walking back to the car. That's why you always bring your putter. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was a. <laughs> All right. Well, this is one of those you were talking about earlier. Am I? No, no it, it, yours no. isn't breaking much. OK, so we're inside the hole. Yeah, and it's yeah. going that way a little. Definitely. So. All right. I'll let you, you mark keep that. Keep it inside the hole, and if anything, it's just going to go this a little right. This is so disrespectful. <laughs> hey, you get to do my move if you want. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> When you bump that ball forward, putting the mark down, are you going to put it back where it was or oh, not? Oh, relax. <laughs> we offered you All right. good. Very nice. So Take it up, Sully. That's good. Take it, Take it up. God, just, just making you <laughs> making you work a little bit. That was, that was, hey, let's go, man. No, that's a hell of a come suspense. on, come on. We're, come on. We're never out of it. The kids are never out of it. Let's go. <laughs> Neil, unfortunately, we got to go to number four next. Uh, the provisional boys, the reloady boys, uh, step up to yes. the tee. Uh, how relatable is this swing from Jordan? Uh oh. Holy shit. <laughs> hell yeah. I think that's out. <laughs> But I know how that looks. I love that. I'm right at home. Right at home up there. Deep to right? Hell yes. I went from the draw to the fade while I lined up for the draw. But that's just a really uncomfortable tee shot because uh, you can't see like the landing area and you got more room. Up. Honestly, it seems like both sides than, than you realize. So uh, we were not focused there would be my the, the way I would put that. that those were some unfocused swings. 
fuck. There we go. Sick. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> We're at three walk back to the cart. Good news is they're the same ball with the same number. <laughs> Got a little stuck on that one. I probably concede the hole if they're both out. Wow, okay. After how last one went. There's one of them. Where? Right here. Oh, that's you. Oh, that's... Which one? What was first, a Pro V or Pro V X? Pro V X was, no, we you were we playing hit, yours. No, I did not. No, oh, my, the, I hit yours. The first you one was a two. We, no, no. We, we hit, it would have been yours. First one was an X, Remember second one was a Pro V X. So you hit the approach, you threw me a ball. But that was the ball from the last hole, which was yours. Oh, Right. which one's that? This is an, you, well, you hit two Xs. No, right? no, I hit a Pro V number two. Damn it, this is an X. Yeah, that's yes. you, that's you. Okay, then yours is right there. Huh? Then, then yours would have been back further. Maybe didn't clear that. I think Niels was further right, to be honest. Yeah, mine was not good. All right, get in the cart, Solly. JT, you can see his, uh, I'm not frustrated, but I'm actually a little frustrated with the get in the cart, Solly. Uh, was was very, very good stuff. I, I really enjoyed that line. Uh, just a roller coaster of emotions out there, Neil. And because we hit so many provisionals, I forgot it was my turn. <laughs> so I was standing there waiting for him. I thought he was like talking me through his shot in detail, like what he was going to do. And what he was doing was telling me what I should do. And then I realized it was time for me to hit. Yeah. How far do you have? We're up. Yeah. Any, any day now. Can we hit? Oh, you're you're hitting. Oh, it's mid, 95. Okay. He didn't know Sorry. it was his shot. We were, we were talking. We were just getting in our process. All right, 95 adjusted. Here we go. Come on, yeah. Schuster, get your ass um, out of here. If you can't, I want uh, you I want you yeah, to try. Yeah, hey, I got this one. Hold on. Try to hit it five yards right of it. Okay. All right, like there's, the there's a lot of room right, and it all funnels to the left. Okay. And then... Once you get to that camera tower, it goes to the left side of the green. So target's five yards right of it. Yep, I oh love that. Oh my god, that's gonna be really good, that's guys. Not, that's five feet right of it. Even better. Oh, golf shot! Birdie putt! Great Look at shot. that. Yeah. Team Genghis. Dude, we Team just, Genghis. They get false hope every hole. It's yeah. great. Honestly, I kind of blacked out. I didn't even really think about that shot all day until I watched the the film room and I saw like, damn, that was a really good iron shot. I got really lucky on the next tee shot, which uh, should have been in the hazard, but I skirted around the edge there, which was which was great. And then Deej, to tee it up, probably like the most fascinating conversation of the day. While you and JT are, you know, going through your uh, your steps and your flight checklist from the fairway, we're over there talking about Spieth and all his swing feels from, from back in the day. So I think your your pod with Solly was one of my favorites ever. My what? Your podcast. Oh, Specifically really? because of the section where you went through your three swing fields. You had like, you're like yeah, my, that one was my that? 2015 swing, my, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You still got three? Or you, or you, you got one? It was so That was in a relatable. time where I was really struggling. Yeah. And I did that. And yeah, there's a few different ways to think about it, but none of them were what I needed at the time. Sure. So it's kind of, um, I would rather map pick one of those to map so um, pick a time frame since things got really off yeah to try to try to essentially have it map it but it feels very different than what I was trying to almost the opposite of what I was trying sure. to do then yeah the, um, the, the, tr the trigger is different now like it doesn't so yeah, you think like you're doing back that. then I was actually trying to roll the face open and, and actually come over it I actually need the face more shut and I need to be yeah. getting it shallowed so it's like I, stuff i did naturally that i wish i still didn't that i'm trying to get back to doing naturally why do you think it changed i got what got um, out of sync i i um broke a bone in my hand yeah and uh all right the bone chip and my hand was killing me and my grip got like this week yeah and so the face got dead open so i had to back up like if you if i look at a driver swing from like 2018 19 i'm literally on my back foot hit. yeah like he's not on either one of his feet just yeah and uh i would back up and flip and so i just started arm swinging and flipping and using my hands couldn't yeah hit a fade. saving it couldn't hit a fade yeah, I'd save yeah. every shot and i did that and i didn't go get it fixed i couldn't train my grip because it hurt and so i just i didn't make the right decisions on sure taking time off and getting things fixed now it's better but i mean it feels better it comes here and there um i think that brings us to shot of the day most memorable shot of the day maybe uh jordan's chunked five iron into the hazard just uh, you know some reaction from you guys there whoa <laughs> Neil's, Neil's guy might not have it today uh 209 adjusted i've got a five iron trying to slide it in there pitch it if 
five short or so. Give it some room to slide. <laughs> get up, get up. <laughs> oh, that's not even close. That's like in the middle of hey, it. Hey, Neil, Yo, it, crossed, it crossed right here. Saw that. <laughs> Do they have an extra set of eyes? Oh my goodness. Uh, I mean, it was the highest of highs. Like, oh, we just got away with, with murder here, getting around this corner. Like, you know, I was like, F yeah, God, I didn't make back-to-back -back, like boneheaded mistakes. I felt bad because I felt like maybe I was talking about bone chips and <laughs> swing feels. And like, I put them in a bad headspace before that, <laughs> probably. Uh, maybe thinking a little too much mechanical stuff. And then I didn't know how to react because I was shocked. So I, I went straight to the like, get up, get up. And he's like, no, dude, that's like in the middle of the hazard. I'm like, I, yeah, obviously I know that. I know what else to say? So I almost went to like your classic member guest talk track of like, oh, it's, it's all good. You know, we'll, we'll get it back on the next one. You know, but it's like, well, this guy's like the number 14 player in the world. I can't say that. So I didn't really say anything. And then JT comes whizzing by with some smart ass remark. So. I was able to respond to him. I think we said this in the moment too, but it's worth mentioning how shocking it is and how different these guys are that like that guy who chunked the five iron in the middle of the hazard also just went out and shot 19 under that week and, you know, was in contention at the golf tournament for a while. Like it's just, these guys are, they get rusty the same as everybody else. They just bounce back so much quicker and uh, it's just really cool to see that up, up close. Definitely. This was, again, first time at Kapalua for me. This was the coolest part of the property. Like the, the coolest hole out there yeah. is actually from 5T to 6 green. Uh, just this massive ravine between these two holes. It's a long ride between these two holes. But that, that, that second shot into five is really thrilling. And my one time hitting it, I was like, Dude, we're not losing this right. I just could not afford to leak one right and have it never have a chance. Uh, but that is a fun, fun golf hole. I know the, the pros tear it up, but uh, both of those two combined back to back are an awesome stretch. All right, Neil, let's go to number six. You got kind of a circus shot that that Jordan's trying to talk you into here. I think he's doing this more for content than uh, it giving you know you the best chance to get the ball close to the hole. But let, let's let's hear what he says. Kind of a nice, just a regular kind of a driving pitch that lands in here. Okay, anywhere over the netting before the slope, and should kind of skid and go right to it. All right, don't um. I guess I'm trying to help with the trajectory. It's not like a lofted, but it's not like a rip drive. It's just a normal let the slope do yeah. it. Does that make sense? It does. I think I've said too much, but. No, that's all right. You get the gist. We're deep in our process here. Talk to me about it. Well, Jordan's kind of, I mean, he's coaching me here. We're going, if we go at the pin, we get 15 feet. There's no way to get it close. So we're going right through these cart tracks. We're going to hit a little driving pitch and try to bring it off this slope. That is what I've been tasked with. I'd love to see that. It'd be pretty cool, huh? I got him playing the playing one. the up the slope one, so we'll see. Well, I guess, but <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's not really a high one, but it's not really a low one. Just like a normal pitch shot right there. Yeah, I mean it's oh too high, too hard. Uh oh. Too much? Uh -oh. Sit, 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 sit. Uh oh. Yeah, ah. I just flew flew the ridge. Yeah. That's the right idea, but that's not that's not gonna get it done. If you play this again, watch how fast Jordan like figures out exactly what's gonna happen. This is to me where it, it was kind of like, if I if we were all playing chess, I'd be playing the exact move on the board, and Jordan Spieth is playing the one like four steps ahead in terms of him knowing too high up on that, too far exactly where it needed to land, and how it, it just it, yeah. Again, maybe that sounds obvious, but like. I was sitting right there taking in the same thing that they're taking in and not processing information anywhere near the same way they do, which was, uh, I don't know, that was that was definitely a takeaway for me for just like how refined these guys are at using the elements around them. First birdie of the day comes at number seven. Neil, you know, I think Jordan gave you a pretty perfect read here. Had to feel good to cash this one. Yeah, and I felt pretty good about my stroke. Other than that, the short one I missed, I felt like my speed was really good up to that point. So I was like, all right, we can give this one a, a good chance. I, I was putting confident and I'm, I'm, you know, I do think a strength of mine is when I have the right caddy or the right partner, like I can be a vessel for that person. You know, like I'm not like, I have no pride of ownership over like the reading of my putts. 
So when I, you know, we both were seeing the same thing there. It's a little easier when you're seeing the same thing, but that that was a a really he put put that ball like pin high and it was just like a cool 18 feet like let's give this a good run and uh i was pretty jacked up to see how jacked up he was that it went in hey stay up right there in the middle a great putt he's like oh shit he made a putt that's crazy <laughs> so that was a lot of fun it's all anything to take away from number eight i just want to say like what a th like a true thrill it was to just like go head to head on iron shots with jordan speed <laughs> like knowing that it's i'm up against it a couple times I held my own, a couple times I hit it closer, a couple times he just like, you know, I hit kind of wipey, horrible shots. But it is really fun on the same shot to hit it over a ravine and try to get it closer than Jordan Spieth just did in like a, in a match. That was very fun. Uh, one shot I don't know that you would have been able to hit closer is the driver off the deck that he hit on number nine. Uh, I think... <laughs> Uh, Justin, first of all, there's a history of Justin Thomas hitting drivers off the deck. Solly, I don't know if you want to speak to that a little bit and why uh, maybe he was not the biggest fan of the joke that I was trying to say out there. Justin, you got any tips for driver off the deck? Oh my God, <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> hey, there's a, car, there's a guy in a cart coming right in the go zone down here. <laughs> Well, he killed a guy at the Valspar like in 2015 <laughs> with a driver. Uh, it, it, he did hit a dude in the head. For the, for the record, he didn't actually die, but it resulted in one of the funniest clips of all time. This guy just rolling around on the ground, and he was fine. So it's it's funny to laugh at now. But uh, So since then, it's been very fun to needle JT every time about uh, hitting driver off the deck. And uh, I thought that was a very well-timed joke you made. Uh, so... Jordan steps up, maybe gives himself a lie, maybe doesn't. Inconclusive. I don't know if we have the video evidence to to show whether he stomped, I think he's clear. I think stomped he's fine. and placed it or not. I but uh, steps up and just hits one of the most unbelievable shots I think I've ever seen. <laughs> Thing went like ninety feet in the air. Uh, somehow a driver off the deck lands soft, rolls out to about twenty feet. Just unbelievable stuff. I don't know if you guys have any. There's not really much to say other than just like. That's that's pretty. It good. was awesome. It was <laughs> it was awesome to see in person. It would have been driver off the deck for me, but there was zero chance I was following that again with new <laughs> clubs. Like there was there was no way I was trying to hit the uh, driver after Spieth just did that. I thought, all right, don't chunk it. Maybe get it within forty yards of the green. Again, we're not like fully processed. We're not fully dialed yet. So uh, with Spieth, you know, I was I was you know kind of showing some bravado of like I don't think I need driver to get there, Jordan. Uh, but that was not what was going on <laughs> internally. Uh, so this is when Solly and JT kind of started running downhill here as, as really exemplified by JT's six iron into 10. Uh, let's, let's watch this one first. And Solly, I want to hear kind of what you were, you were hearing by the cart there. What's the, what's the number you're playing to here? 61. I mean, I'm just going to hit a little six. Okay. I mean, I think it's damn near playing 80. Okay. But it's got a. Off this upslope, it's got to stay down a little bit. Come on. Come on. Kick it. This might be okay. Sit down. Come back. Oh, that's so good. Oh, the lady's gonna love that one. You know, DJ, <laughs> when you win here twice, you understand that that you can do that. So it's good shot. Thank good you. Shot. Good Thank shot. you. That was sweet. So this was one of the few moments of the day where you're kind of coming back from Jordan's uh, Jordan's shot, and I'm like, dude, film this, film this right here. It's bones, freaking talking about like altitude and elevation and wind and all this stuff with JT. And like figuring out, like basically, like it sounds like their game plan for the year for like into the wind shots, and uh, yeah, I I I don't need to explain it to you. Like this is the conversation. That was kind of a good example of obviously like those super windy days, yeah. you know, when we've played well. But I think when it's downwind, it's a lot easier to kind of play a number. But like there, like okay. you know, with like having to choke down and like hitting a six iron from 160 yards, like it's. It's 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 all it's more like you know when when I'm not trying to hit a number it's just more like I'm just hitting a shot like I'm just trying it was like on 17 that day at Sawgrass it was like I'm just trying to f hit it. and it's more like I'm like I I was telling Darren like I, I like there like I I knew I just kind of was like okay I'm trying to hit it 160 yards with a six iron but like 
maybe if the quad was down, like I probably wouldn't be as exact on the number versus like hitting it there. And I think we kind of were like talking through it. And he says that I or he thinks, which makes sense is like, I have an idea of like a trajectory in my head that has to get that number. And then it's more of like matching the club to that trajectory. You know what I mean? Six iron trajectory, like seven iron distance with the six iron. Like seven Something, iron, like yeah, swing. Yeah, but it's only like when it gets windy enough where like you're not necessarily trying to hit a number. It's just like, it's like when you go to a range and like you see a pin and you don't even know how far it is, but like you're like, it's like a nine iron and it's like more 90% of the time it's the perfect distance. But maybe if I had a quad down, I wouldn't be hitting, you know, the number like that versus downwind. It's like, okay, this is about 20, 25 yards of help versus there. Like, you know, I, I'm just trying to, hit a low six iron and it's gonna but it was kind of interesting going through it different ways and like we like we did one of the rows where um where i just went off feel like i just looked at it and i was trying to you know hitting nine and eight irons from 140 yards or 135 yards because it was pretty windy and then see how i did and then the next round like tried to hit a number on quad and to see and i did better when i just like tried to hit it. it it was i'm obsessed with that like i love that aspect i feel like i've gotten way better at that personally of like all right if it's 180 into the wind we need this we need like a 190 shot but we need it with the 200 club like that is kind of the, the what i took away from that conversation was like we it's, we need it 10 extra yards but it's got to be a different trajectory than just like the club that's one up so he almost sounds like he goes two clubs up but hits the distance of it one club up, and that's a trajectory you need to hit the right shot into the wind. And Which, that was awesome. I think it shows how much creativity and imagination JT has, and that's not something I appreciated about his game. Like To me, he's always been, yeah, the guy's just like a stock track man golfer. Like He's got a beautiful swing, and he generates a ton of power, and it's on repeat. And I think my opinion of that flipped completely after this day. Like His... His creativity around the greens and sh you know shots and conversations like that was like oh okay I have not been giving him enough credit. So speaking of that, he he steps up at eleven, uh, kind of steps on your guys' throat again, drops one in there close. Neil, you have yeah. to now back it up. What what's it like on on the flip side of what Solly was saying about number eight? What's it like to go toe to toe with Justin Thomas when he's like clearly feeling it? <laughs> Neil, what's going through your head right now, man? Uh, smooth. Smooth is fast. Yep. You got nine? I got nine. Yeah, I think it's a smooth nine. Yep. Boy, this would be great to watch this land inside of Justin's. Girls get it right on camera up there. Hmm. Hang on. That's ah. Why is that four. moving left? Or be shorter than. Right there, right there, right there, right there. Oh, Come shit. on. Oh, I gotta camp that one. That felt a lot better than that. <laughs> Damn. You're gonna walk this one? That's all right. All right. Yeah, all right. I know. I know. There's a good there's, swing. We're gonna make it three and we're gonna make them win the hole. Did you guys miss the green? No. <laughs> no. It's right behind your ball. You just can't tell. I just said Spieth, very creative, or uh, JT, very creative, you know, thinking man's golfer uh but get you a man that can do both talk about the track man shot i mean okay we're gonna hit a nine iron and we're gonna drop it right on the flag stick and uh that was very impressive at a like at a point in the match where it was like oh great like this just got out of hand all of a sudden i think uh if we could play this one more time what i'm most interested in if we could juice the audio of of what jordan says right when that ball starts to roll away <laughs> Ah, why is that moving left? Right there, right there, right there, right there. Oh, shit. Oh, I could have canned that putt. Man, I could have canned that putt. Uh, all right, let's go to number 12. Uh, Neil, you got another circus one that Jordan's trying to talk you through here. I, I just kind of a same, similar one to number six. Let's just listen in on, on this. I would, I would say ideally it's coming in and trying to miss those sprinkler heads. You want it to run on that line. I love it. Are you, uh, you playing like what kind of, which, which wedge you playing here? I, I, I use a 60 just cause I always use a 60. I mean, so you have like one wand too, if I'm like a real bump and run, but yeah. here, like I would just put back foot 60 Yeah. and try and kind of hit a lower one that lands on those, that, that, that grass. All right. That would be, 
but it doesn't really matter. Getting cheeky here, Pine. Whales everywhere. We're gonna put one over by these sprinkler heads, short left of the pin, let it trickle on. Anything I fly there is gonna run with the grain, so. Oh, Reagan ball? Yeah, Reagan ball for sure here. May I may have gotten them going too cute here. Yeah, it's just if you land it on out of that first cut, it's gonna run away. No. Go, 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 more. All right. A lot of margin for error with that shot, at least. Fuck. Maybe not when you're too down. Usually hitting shots you don't practice goes well. I don't know. For me. God. Right. You know, it's just a kind of a, it was a bad shot, but I think the strategy was correct. That one felt a a lot more comfortable. Like I expected to hit that one good and just didn't execute. Whereas number six, I was like, I don't know, man, this is, a, there's a lot of variables here. I'm not sure I see what you see. I um, think there was a total moment for Jordan of like, here's exactly how I would play this shot. Like, and Neil, you're a good player. Like, here's exactly what I see. I'm going to do this and 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 I'm going to do this. Whoa, that was a long sentence. Oh, I probably just threw too much at him here. I don't think this is the right call here. Like, Which is I what know. I signed up for, though. I loved yeah. it. Like, the last thing I want to do is like, no, let me play this stock, like, you know, high wedge shot that you've just told me isn't going to get close. Like, that's no fun. But that's also because Marion... you, guys, you guys stuffed it right before that. And he actually said that. He was like, all right. He's like, jo uh, Justin's not in the rough, so he's going to get this close. And what does he do? He hits it to six feet or eight feet or whatever it was. Like, maybe on the wrong side of the hole, but... We kind of knew we're down like yo we got to start hitting some golf shots and i just you know didn't summon one right there well let's play the shot then on 12 of jt in the in the right rough trying to use the quad to get dialed on this distance and like the specificity of these numbers what are we uh what are we looking for out of the quad uh just trying to hit a certain number and want to see if one if i can do it but also how far it's playing with the wind okay. yeah. 104 or probably fly at like 103. A yeah. A little bit of help. Yeah, maybe 102, 103. But, but. Jump. Okay. Hold the jumper. What the quad say? 97. There we go. So that was 10 yards of help on that. Uh, not quite. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a knuckleball. I thought I was going to be able to get a little more spin. I was trying to hit it at 96, but it's, uh, golly, that's not good. If I may say, this putt on 12, uh, we birdied 9, we birdied 10. Jordan gave me the birdie on 11. This was, like, my chance in, of my life. This was the only one I think I'll ever get to make Jordan go get that. And I was thinking about that before I hit that putt. I have to I have to admit it. All right, I pulled it a little bit. Uh, we might not have had the read right. I followed Justin's read despite him shrugging at the camera as if I wasn't listening to him. Uh, in the uh, moment, I didn't think you were, it didn't sound like you guys were agreeing. Let me put it that way. It sounded like I was like saying was... it's not going to go left when it gets here. And then he finishes with, yeah, overall, I think it's left to right. Like we were on the same page there. And then I pulled it a little bit and then it just never went back to the right. So... But that was a hard putt. G Jordan also acknowledged it's like how hard that green was to read. And I would have never gotten that one on my own because I just, again, my eyes were playing tricks on me. Uh, let's go to number 13. This is one of my favorite moments of the day. Uh, I believe this was after Solly shot. Is that right? You get yes. your partner gives you a big four call. Uh, you very obviously nobody is around. It's not going to hit anybody. But uh, Spieth with a, a little bit, one of my favorite little nuggets of the day. All right, thank oh, God. Thank God. God, you made mine look fine. Quick! Four! The old yell, that's this, Justin does that game and ship in like Ryder Cup and President's Cup more than anybody. Just like, just, he'll just yell four. four. When, it, when it's like marginally, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not your place to say it. Yeah. I love it when I'm on his team. Yeah. All right, guys, let's get to the main event. Uh, the climax of the day. Uh, <laughs> Solly for great content purposes, blows one right uh, into this narrow little did, isthmus of land over there. I did not want to hit driver. I did not. I couldn't get there. I was like, why are we hitting driver? I don't know. But we were up by so much. JT was like, you got to do it. I'm just going to say this up front before people watch the clip. I feel like this was another masterful job by Spieth of uh, like you kind of rushed this swing. You were like in the middle of talking to him about like 
the, the tournament and I don't know. And then you, all of a sudden you just like pulled the club back. I was like, Whoa, that was quick. And then I was like, Oh shit, that's off the planet. <laughs> it's like, it's does this, does this feel resorty to you? Well, I mean, just wide. Yeah. Like, yeah. For so you guys. Augusta. So is Augusta. Very wide. Very true. True. It actually it reminds me a lot of Augusta, just different grass types. I think that's Seriously. why I like, picked you to win it every year. It's like, hey, shots you got to play. He's won like five times at Augusta and he's won like five times here, right? Who? Certainly had five chances both places. <laughs> there it is. There's that we're talking about. Uh, Again, I'm adjusting to a club that doesn't go left anymore. Like the, the, after this, I think I said it on 16T. I was like, I think I'm a fader now. Like I, I, I'm still, I've come to terms with that since this video, but I'm still coming to terms with it at that point. But that tee shot did not fit my eye. I did not like driver there at all. I would have hit five iron if he would have let me. So we we know there's a narrow strip where the ball might be up. Bones starts looking for it. Let's just let's just play this. This is both a career high and low to have Bones looking for a <laughs> golf ball. But he's looking for balls way more offline than this. What number of ball are we playing? We're playing a three, I think. I think it's a four. I thought four. It's got a. Is that a, black, a faded black line on This it. could be awesome. No way. <laughs> oh, come on. This could be awesome right here. <laughs> this is... Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> that's Justin's that's, ball. That's it. It looked like it was in the left edge of this. Oh, shit. Now what do you we... You get to hit it backwards and we then have to... to hit it on. Can I get a 60 degree? Is this out yes. of bounds? It's going to go through that? No. Oh, it's not. Look at that. No, it's not going to go through wow. that. Oh, but you got to be careful about hitting it backwards because it's out of bounds. I'm not hitting it backwards. I'm hitting it as hard as I can right here. Oh, really? Yeah. Why not? Please don't hurt yourself. Yeah, please don't hurt yourself. Please, please don't hurt yourself. <laughs> Bones cares more than anybody, but... <laughs> I, I, I'm going on the other side of you. <laughs> I don't think there's anything where it could ricochet over here, but if I can, if I open this up, I think I can get it up over this. I'm joking. Now you sound like Phil. <laughs> I mean, it is humid out, so you got a chance. <laughs> I'm getting this thing through. I want to ask you guys what, what's going through your head uh, at the top of this swing, because I, I know what's going through my head is just like, oh, we're never going to do this again because he's about to tear something in his wrist. This is so stupid. Please don't do this. It is hard to emphasize how we, we've seen a lot of golf, a lot of different shots, a lot of different types of grasses, like how dead this looked, right? I mean, there's, there's wispy fescue, right? Like there's places in the UK that this shot would have not been that big of a deal, right? When it's wispy, this was vegetation. This was like toast. And so, you know, as soon as Bones had said, please don't hurt yourself, I was like, oh my God, yeah, this is, this is the only way this can go. We had no real other options as far as like taking on playable or whatnot, but if he would have got that even into the bunker or on the other side of that vegetation, that would have been a miracle in my mind. So like my reaction when this ball goes vertical is so completely authentic in terms of pure shock of, oh my God, like how that ball got up. I still don't understand that. I wish we had a slow-mo cam and a side view of all of that because I still don't understand how that ball got up. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best hey, that's good stuff. <laughs> Just shake your hand. <laughs> good you. stuff. It's four feet below it. <laughs> oh my God. God. I told you we're getting through it. <laughs> All right. We got a loft and line machine here in Hawaii. Oh my that was incredible. <laughs> I did not think that would go through there. I didn't either. And they found it. My, how the turns have tabled. I think one of my favorite things, so Neil, because you were tapped in to be the uh, the second player, that meant we had to find a camera person on short notice. Shout out to my wife, Justine, who uh, who stepped in to do that. And, uh, and also your wife, Carson, who got a lot of the behind the scenes social media stuff. Uh, but Justine is so clearly like shocked that this ball gets out that she, it takes her forever to actually like get the camera over near the hole because she, that is the last place she's expecting that ball to end up so that that just kind of makes me laugh every time i see it sorry i almost i almost skipped past this uh would let love. the record state i brought this back up we need to address the putt okay the floor <laughs> is yours please talk to me about this putt again well, we're so up. far up. off air we're so far up at this point i think jt is looking to extend this match uh, a true Phil move being pulled here of like, just give him the putt so you have to make it. And I'm like so confused by all of this happening. This really did not, again, another one of those putts that I think it's right to left. And he's like, no, it's left to right. Um, 
Spieth was not having it all. Gets over in the pat. He gets over in the cart. He's driving away, and I realize as I'm standing over the putt, I'm smiling still, laughing at everything that has just taken place, and I'm not in the right mindset for this putt. I was never going to get that read right, uh, and I still didn't trust. I didn't trust myself enough, and I kind of pushed out there, missed the putt, and let it let it live in infamy. I'll take all you got on the roasting on that one. That that putt's just that putt's got to go in, especially with, with how many I poured into that point. I was not fearing missing that. It, it makes the story way better. I think it's true. I think it's a good it's a it's a good historical miss. Uh, Fifteen. This would be the last match or the last hole of the match. Uh, JT, I, I asked him beforehand. I'm like, you can get it down that hill, right? He's like, no, no, no I don't think so. Of course, hits it down to the bottom of the hill. Uh, match is pretty much over at that point. Neil, I, I got I don't want to put words in your mouth. I, I, I got to think you're trying to keep up with JT a little bit here. I think the good ones that I hit uh, during the round was when I like kind of sold, like went went for it a little yeah. bit. You know, hit the dirt and ball. Like just go, <laughs> like stop trying to steer it. And when I do that, it's great. But on that one, I when I do that and try to fade it is when I have a problem. Does that does that make sense? Like yeah. I was trying, and so that's when the big the big spinning right one comes. Is like I was worried for some reason about the left side, and I shouldn't have been. Um, but I was like, oh, okay, let's hit like the, let's get a nice big like lazy cut, and it just it, it was just a bad bad process for me all the way around there. So I was pretty frustrated with myself because I, I didn't want it to end like that. I wanted them to have to win that hole, and I just gifted gift wrapped it to them, and you know you can see like I yeah I. Freaking hate losing to Solly. Solly, great win for you and JT. Super fun to watch. Congratulations. Uh, we've still got a couple more holes to get through. So the the boys, uh, Jordan and Justin, come up with the idea of taking you guys on uh, alt shot with one club. I'm going to say the highlight of this. I mean, of course, we can take another look at this this fried egg uh, bunker shot that he tries to hit with a six iron. I think that's that's really spectacular stuff. He was so close to actually hitting a perfect shot there. Um, but really, one thing that's going to stick with me forever uh, is is on 17, Jordan's second shot. Uh, first of all, I think it's interesting to hear the conversation about why he doesn't play a five wood and some of that stuff. Uh, we can maybe roll that that clip in here first. So <laughs> I don't play a five wood. I've tried a seven wood and a five wood before, and I get the high yaw lefts with them because of the way it looks to me. The one <laughs> high yaw lefts. Like I played a seven wood at Torrey Pines in the U.S. Open, and like two or three times on three times on number nine, I hit great drives, and you could reach it with it because it was so much firmer. Yeah. And you just can't miss that green left to like three of the pins. And I would just try to play this like high fade to the middle of the green and hit this thing in the left side of the left bunkers and make par and just be like, that was one. That was like my last birdie chance for quite a while on this course. Till the next day. <laughs> What are you gonna do here, parts? I'm gonna try and start it left of the green. No, you're not. Yeah. Why? And cut it. You don't need to hold it that much. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. Okay. But then I think the second most interesting thing is, can you can you really paint a picture of what that truck looked like that that he clanged off, uh, Solly? I mean, what? That's not like. That's not a, something a lot of people have hit. Oh, I towed it. <laughs> is that the high ball? Can't hit the five. Well, that's why I didn't want you to aim left of the f-ing green. I would have hit it over the green. I hit another one hard. Here. <laughs> no, it, oh, like, look, hey, that that. <laughs> we're alive. <laughs> this f-ing guy. I'm telling yeah. you, man. Oh, Neil, that's it's this one. No, that's what I'm saying. He hit this truck. Hit the like truck and bounced back in. Yeah. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Look at that truck. <laughs> this thing has been there since 1985. I think that the truck has been there since before the golf course was there. Uh, I think that was what Rolf drove around in actually in the, in the 70s and, and just parked it there. That's how they found the golf course. Uh, it, we heard it hit this thing and we saw like the, 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 the uh, your wives kind of head like walking towards that. I was like, oh, no, is there a house down there? Like, did we just hurt someone? And sure enough, there's a truck with a a, a flatbed that's angled back towards play, kicking Jordan Spieth's ball back towards the green. And it was JT's I, reaction was just absolutely perfect. This guy, only, this guy. The only thing I think it struck me as I, you know, it's like one of those um, mobile like Sam missile launchers. That's what it looked like when you know when they got the like the thing angled up to the sky, and it was just I was like, what the hell is that doing down there? And 
Yeah, I mean, he just hits it square and bounces back in play. Like it, it's it, could have used a little bit of that Spieth magic before the seventeenth. Uh, that's what that's what we were hoping for. I think it was just the definition of some people are just just sprinkled with uh, with fairy dust and they just they have that luck and some people don't. And it was it was fun to see that in person. And I can't think of like a better guy to have it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that's so it's like he deserves it because he's so he's such a like sincere like nice guy. And so that's that's that was my like biggest takeaway of the day is like Spieth is uh, he's always been easy to root for because he's relatable. Now I find him a lot easier to root for because he's just like a, a good guy. And, you know, I know it's like, oh, well, you played with him and this and that. It's like, well, you know, we're around a lot of these guys. And I just was kind of uh, blown away by like how sincere he was. Solid biggest takeaway of the day. Uh, the unique nature of this event, honestly, like like you said, Neil, we, we're around these guys a fair amount. You don't see them in that good of a mood all the time. It just becomes everything from this point on in the year becomes very business like, right? Like they really were there to have fun. And I think like getting the opportunity to capture that was a true thrill because like, we've seen that from time to time. You've seen guys in certain scenarios where they're really fun. And, you know, the, the fact that they were their exact personalities once the cameras were on and you know, maybe ham it up just a tiny bit on cam, but for the most part, like they had beers with us in the clubhouse for hours afterwards, talking about golf and life and everything possible. And it just made me feel like, all right, like, you know, sometimes I'm like, are we being too biased towards these guys? Like, do we, you know, it's like, no, no, these guys are just easy to root for. Like there's, we, we've, we've vetted these to get these guys. Like, I think there's very good reasons to root for these guys. They displayed a lot of that in this, uh, in this one day with our video that uh, I'm glad that we'll be on the internet forever. Only thing that really stuck with me from afar is you guys kind of touched on it, but just watching how much they light up when you talk about golf sicko stuff. Mm. Like they are golf perverts, right? Like they cannot get enough. They absolutely love it, love it, love it. And I think that's a little bit why they they come alive in something like this is because it involves like real golf and real golf shots and explaining how to hit a certain shot and people who appreciate like oh wow you did just hit a float cut driver off of number one i think a lot of media stuff that they get asked to do is probably a lot more like what restaurants do you eat at on the road and like you guys are such good friends and i think that stuff shines through almost more when you see them in like their natural habitat instead of saying like you know cameras on be funny i, th I think putting them in hopefully putting them in the position to succeed just kind of shows off what golf sickos there are and i think there's a lot of a lot of guys like that i think max is like that i think there's a lot of other other players that hopefully we can kind of bring to light in a, a similar fashion because i had a blast a blast watching it all right guys thank you for reliving it all hopefully people uh enjoyed getting a second crack at this video thank you to jordan and justin for giving us the time thanks to the tour for for making it pretty easy for us to knock this out thanks to titleist and footjoy for helping it come together uh, hoping to do more of these in the future. It, it was, these were about as fun as it gets. So I don't know that they'll all be at PJ Tour venues necessarily, but hopefully we can catch some guys during off weeks and, and do some similar stuff. Uh, guys, thrilled to be with you. Uh, thanks for the insights, and we will uh, catch everybody next time. Cheers. Cheers.